Now, Brown, as you all know, uh, has a very long, very distinguished association with the field of classics, Egyptology. We have the only department of Egyptology in the country, archaeology now. You know, basically the study of old things in all its manifestations. But the sort of the operative, in uh, uh, stealing a word from Ruth, uh, the bold word for today is everywhere. Can we truly be everywhere? And where does archaeology in particular belong when you think about where it should be placed, both really and sort of uh, metaphorically on the Brown campus? When I got this job, that was when I really first began to realize that this question, you know, where does archaeology belong, is actually more complicated than I'd expected. It has several levels, several angles, and that's some of the stuff I'd like to share with you today, my thinking, and especially to talk, I, I really enjoy talking about this with people who know Brown very well and who have known it over many years. Archaeology is, in its present incarnation, very profoundly interdisciplinary. It's almost impossible to be an archaeologist and, uh, you know, and, and uh, not be engaged or really forced into collaborative research. You cannot do any of this all by yourself. It's almost impossible at Brown or at any university to take an archaeologist and put them into buildings around campus and find that they can't have a, co a good conversation with just about anyone. So where does this kind of free-range study belong in the academy? You know, archaeologists who are, you know, often we are asking exactly the same questions. We have similar data sets. But just because we work in different parts of the world, we're separated on campus. Uh, we're sort of, we end up sort of peering at each other across a distance and talking to each other instead of just being normal and natural and automatic becomes something that takes time and effort. And that's something that not everyone has. Now that's kind of a gloomy picture. Uh, things are getting better. Things are changing um, for various reasons, not least because new places are being created in the academy for archaeology and places such as the Joukowsky Institute here at Brown. The great advantage of like pulling all the archaeologists in together rather than scattering them around is that instead of having to try to find the time to talk to each other, uh, we can talk to everyone else. We can concentrate on seeking out connections to other people, other disciplines, other students. Uh, just look at, so these are just a random selection of posters from some of the talks we've had recently. We've had talks about violence with people in religious studies and philosophy. Uh, we had a talk about the Sardinian Bronze Age towers. We cross-listed with anthropology. One of the things I'm proudest of is uh, our friendships with the Division of Engineering. Uh, Brown, some of you I'm sure are aware, is very strong in material science, the, an the analysis, the scientific analysis of physical objects. That's what archaeology is all about. And so now we're building relationships. I just wanted to stress the idea whether we're an onion or a hub, we belong at the center of things. Now another answer to the question where does archaeology belong is where we do our field work. Uh, the short and easy answer to where should we do it is well, we should do it everywhere. Uh, human destruction, there's no other word for it, of the landscape is going on at a terrifying rate of knots. Uh, it, the archaeological record globally is fast disappearing. You know, what do we do about this as archaeologists? Well, we try to go out and save what we can. Uh, and the Joukowsky Institute is working actually in an increasing number of places. I give you the list there. We are working currently in Armenia, China, Egypt, France, Guatemala, Israel, Jordan, Portugal, Rhode Island, Turkey, uh, I should probably add Panama. We've got someone visiting working on Panamanian archaeology. And then the graduate students do what they want and go to other places on top of that. If you had to say what's sort of been the signature project of Brown in uh, the old world, it would be Martha Joukowsky's work at Jordan at the Great Temple. A. Petra won a great award. It was voted one of the new seven wonders of the world, one of the modern seven wonders of the world. Uh, that's a proud designation, but tourism at the site went through the roof. More than a million people tramped all over Petra in the year following that vote. And when you're talking about, yeah, this very delicate sandstone, much damage can be done. And this is just a couple aerial views of the Great Temple. This is what it looked like when they started 
If you ever want to know, you know, how much difference a project can make, when they first started it looked like this, and 17, 18 years later it looks like this. And finally, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of work in our own backyard. Um, one project is actually an undergraduate class. We call it the Archaeology of College Hill. Uh, we started the project digging at the First Baptist Church of America, and now we're at the John Brown House, the Rhode Island Historical Society. They've been very welcoming. Um, if you're curious, go to our website and look at the information we have about the project. Uh, it is, it is really, it is great good fun. It is brown students at their best. There are many photos of students in action. Uh, we have a video log of some uh, candid, shall I say, moments. We had the students blog about their experience. They write what they're actually thinking and feeling as they dig, as they explore the past. The years that we've taught this class, we've had students from classics, chemistry, applied math, economics, history, teacher training, as well as archaeologists all working together. And I think that's very important, you know, that archaeology can provide a place where this diverse kind of group of students can meet together and talk together, but they also have to explain what they're doing to the outside world. They have to communicate with a wider community. Because as they're out there digging publicly, people will walk by and they'll say, what on earth are you doing? And they have to explain themselves. And that is very good for them. The final thing to consider, of course, is, is the physical place, the, the home of the Joukowsky Institute. We are now officially in Rhode Island Hall on the, uh, on the main green. And please do come visit. We are just over there. Um, this is an appropriate location for the Joukowsky Institute for all kinds of reasons. Uh, as you may well know, Rhode Island Hall, built in 1840, was really the first science building on campus. And it was, for a time, a home of various public exhibits of natural history. It was designed to have two front doors. There's a door that looks onto the main green and a door that looks out towards Providence. And that, that works very well for the Institute because we want to not only serve the brown community. We want to interact with people outside. And then finally, and I'm sure you're waiting for me to talk about the central location, uh, I do think it is entirely appropriate. Just again to remind you where we are, here's Wilbur Hall, that's Egyptology. Rhode Island Hall, the John Carter Brown Library is just there. University Hall over here. But all our friends and buddies, religious studies is just here. Classics is just here. Art history is just here. We're very close together. If the Joukowsky Institute is a, going to be a hub, a hub on campus, a hub linking the campus and Providence and the wider world, then this kind of central location can only speed our cause. And for all those reasons, we are just happy as clams to be in Rhode Island Hall. And again, all I can do is invite you to come on over and visit. Anyway, I'll stop there, take some questions, fill you in more on anything you'd like to hear about. And thank you very much for inviting me. All right.